Hey guys, welcome to the Red Onion Podcast. Today's subject will be No Man's Land. We'll be talking about some festivals, some birthdays, and also talking about some record releases. You can get us at, uh, visit our website at www.redonionent.com or you can go get us on Facebook at Red Onion Entertainment. And also you can get us on Twitter at Red Onion ENT ER. T one. All right. First thing we're going to talk about today on the podcast, on the Red Onion podcast, is uh, the festivals we have coming up this week in uh, the state of Louisiana. Um, we have the state fair going on right now in Baton Rouge and in Shreveport. Uh, it's going on until uh, October the tenth. Um, they got concerts. They got mid, uh, the Carnival Midway. They got entertainment every night. Um, real nice. Uh, festival at both uh, venues. Uh, the next festival we have is the Port Berry Cracklin Festival. Um, this Friday through Sunday, and uh, Port Berry is located uh, just east of just east of Opelousas, Louisiana, right there on Highway 90. Uh, the Port Port Berry uh, Lions Club they charted this uh, festival back in uh, 1985, and uh, that's the year it came came about. There's an admission of five dollars per person. Uh, per day, people, uh, children under 10 get in free and also the active military with a valid ID get in free. Uh, some of the uh, guys that will be playing there is uh, Gino Della Foss and French Rock and Boogie. You got Jamie Bajeron and the Kicking Cajuns. You got Clay Cormier and the Highway Boys. Dustin Sanye and the Walnut. And Jeff Bates will be playing out there. The next festival we're going to talk about is the River Parish Fall Festival um, going on uh, November 8th through the 10th. And the other festival we have is the Chafalaya Basin Festival, uh, November 9th. It's a one-day festival. This fa- fun- this festival right here is a fundraiser for the Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Church in Henderson and Sacred Heart of Jesus Chapel in Butte, Louisiana. The festival began in 2007 and always been free. Some of the uh, people that are playing there is Dustin Sanye and Walnut, Louisiana Red, Gino Delafosse, and Jamie Bajeron. The next festival we're going to talk about is Thibodeau. Thibodeauville Fall Festival, November 9th. That's a one-day festival also in Thibodeau right there, just west of New Orleans, about an hour west of New Orleans. Then they have the Louisiana Renaissance Festival going on. Um, it's going on November 2nd through the 3rd, 9th and 10th. Uh, it goes throughout all of November and uh, also in the first couple weeks in December. Um, and it's in Hammond, Louisiana, uh, about an hour about 45 minutes uh, east of Baton Rouge on uh, Interstate 12. All right. And this festival, uh, you know, it's, it's got a theme park. They got theaters. They got holiday shopping sensation, educational experience. Um, real nice Renaissance Festival right there in Hammond, Louisiana. All right. Next on the podcast, we're going to roll into record releases for this week. We got uh, quite a a couple of them. Um, We'll talk about them now. Um, We got the Revelers coming out with a a CD or or EP on November the 8th. Uh, The name of the record is going to be At the End of the River. It's an independent label. Then on November 15th, Mark Broussard from Opelousas or Karen Crow, Louisiana. Soulful guy. He's got a a new project coming out. The The Lullaby Collection. S.O.S. Then a guy from Lake Charles, Louisiana, named Justin Martindale, he'll be coming out with a CD called American Zen. And then we got the big one. Dr. John passed away a couple of months ago, um, and they found this uh, record uh, that, that he recorded uh, back in, I think, 1985, no, 1995, called Big Voodoo, Big Band Voodoo. It features Mac playing with the WDR band, It was recorded in 1995. Uh, It's been stuffed away ever since then, so it just came out. Uh, The WDR band is a renowned uh, big band um, from throughout Europe. They're from Europe. Um, It's incredible. Um, It's a a merger between the big band, the syncopated piano style playing that that Dr. John's playing on. Here's his vocals and his phrasing. Uh, It's just a great 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 record uh i haven't got a chance to 
hear it yet though i heard a little bit of it on wwl a couple of days ago they played parts of it and it was just incredible it was recorded also in germany okay we're going to move on over to birthdays before i do i'd like to remind you that you can visit uh, visit us at our website at www.redonionent.com you can get us on facebook at red onion entertainment please like us um, also you can get us on twitter at red onion e n t e r t one all right now we're gonna go to birthdays uh, our first birthday november 10th is bobby rush he's a uh, singer songwriter from homer louisiana 1940 he was born november 10th he's a blues singer also we have stanley buckwheat uh Durrell. He's a Zydeco musician from Lafayette, 1947. That's Buckwheat Zydeco right there. Also, Chris Cagle, a singer-songwriter from Derrida, Louisiana, 1968. He was a country singer. I think he might have uh, retired now, but I know he had a couple of hits on the country radio. Also, uh, Lillis Booty, the rapper from Baton Rouge. He was born in 1983. And also, Ellis Marcellus, the pianist, co composer, and music educator of New Orleans. His two sons are Bradford, Bradford Marcellus and Wynton Marcellus, very accomplished musicians. they they kind of known as one of the first families of jazz in, um, in, in New Orleans um, in this period. Now we're going to have our spotlight. Each week, I like to try to spotlight... Uh, something history of Louisiana, uh, maybe in food or music. And this week, uh, we're going to talk about No Man's Land. The no, Land, no Man's Land was located south of Shreveport, west of Alexandria, south to Lake Charles. Far from the lights of Bourbon Street and the bayous of Cajun Country and the farmlands of North Louisiana is an entire swath of, of West Louisiana known as the Nutra Strip. This inhabited region is a wealth of historical incidents and natural beauty and just might be one of the best off beaten paths destinations you'll see in the South. The boundaries of Spanish and French territories in present day Texas and Louisiana border had never been formally established prior to the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. The original boundaries have been drawn via gentleman's agreement between the Spanish commander of Los Angeles, which was the capital of Texas, and the French commander at Natchitoches, Louisiana, the oldest settlement in the entire Louisiana Purchase. Three years after the Louisiana Purchase, Spain on present day East Texas, it, uh, it was very tedious um, in that uh, area um, on the border right there, and Americans were moving in, and tensions between the two superpowers were very high. So, the no man's land became a haven for squatters, runaway slaves, army people, uh, deserters, um, thieves, merchants, merchants in uh, Natchitoches and present day Texas who relied on the trading routes that went through the no man's land began seeing their stock and supplies disappear. So, peaceful territory that Spain and the U.S. sought by creating no man's land became everything but. So. No Man's Land experiment finally was ended in 1821. Territory covers eight par different parishes in Louisiana, Allen Parish, Boagoa Parish, DeSoto Parish, the Lug Charles area, Natchitoches area, Sabine Parish, and Vernon Parish. So some of the artists, uh, that musical artists that came along way after the No Man's Land happened, that, that lived in this basically No Man's Land after that, um, you got Phil Phillips, born in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana in 19, uh, his name, Phil Phillips, and he had a song called Sea of Love, real big song called Sea of Love, and I think they recorded that at Go Band Records in Lake Charles. Little Alfred uh, from Lake Charles, he played with Cooking the Cupcakes. They had a 1959 hit also called Matilda, which is kind of like the, uh, the song for Louisiana. Um, you got Roy Brown from Kinder, Louisiana. Roy Brown had a song called Good Rock in the Night out of New Orleans, and it's considered one of, one of the first or maybe the first rock and roll song, Good Rock in the Night by Roy Brown from Kinder. Um, that song was also covered by Elvis Presley, Bruce Springsteen, Ricky Nelson, Jerry Lee Lewis, James Brown, and The Doors. Also in this area that he was born, uh, Smiley Lewis. 
Smiley Lewis had a song called I'll Hear You Knocking. He was born in De Quincey, Louisiana. Gatemouth Brown, he was born in Vinton, Louisiana and raised in Orange, Texas. And then you had Gold Band Records. Gold Band Records was a, a, a record company, a recording company, that a record label that came out of uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. It was founded in 1945 and is, it was best known for Cajun and R&B recordings in the 50s and 60s. And also Dolly Parton did her first ever recording at Gold Band Records in Lake Charles, Louisiana. We're going to bring you the sauce. The sauce, we talk about a couple of uh, recipes or we talk about some food from Louisiana or, or um, what was, uh, what, what's, what, how we cook it in Louisiana. And today's sauce is going to be cracklins and couchon de lait. So cracklins, cracklins is a uh, is is a skin with a layer of, of fat beneath the pork belly of pigs deep fried in a large black iron pot. The history of this pork scratchings they called it uh, is clouded in mystery, but the consensus of opinion is that the pork scra scratchings originated from the West Midlands and uh, Black Country uh, England. Uh, pork scratchlings were very much a food for the working class with origins of back in the eight, early 1800s. Families uh, keeping their own pig at home, then feeding it up for slaughter, not wanting to waste anything. All the parts of the pig would be used if possible. So our next thing is a couchon de lait. The couchon de lait, the couchon de lait, the, it's a French phrase, phrase loosely transmitted as milk fed or suckling pig. Historically, this uh, tradition was true to name and implied that the roasting of a young or small pig, often as a part of a Cajun tradition called the Boucherie. Um, and the Boucherie Festival, they have one in Sorrento, Louisiana, and I think there's a couple other ones. There's uh, one in Mansour, also Mansour, Louisiana, which I think we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, ever since uh, pigs were uh, domesticated, and now in, in what is now Turkey, um, people have... Uh, um, roasted these pigs, whole pigs, over open fires. Nothing compared to the aroma of the wood smoke infused with pork. Slow roasting has long been a preferred method of cooking pork and obtain the savory taste of the and rich textures. In Louisiana, while the oranges are the same, Couchon de Lay has some come to mean the social event surrounding the roasting of a pig. Um, n normally uh, what happens is you get a roast of a pig you have a bunch of people and we like to drink in Louisiana and partake in all that and especially when we play the Arkansas Razorbacks I know that uh, I do one just about every year when we do the when, we, when LSU plays the Ar Arkansas Razorbacks um, now Louisiana cannot claim to the custom of roasting of the suckling pig this is a delicacy has been around for centuries centuries and centuries and provided a festive centerpiece for many royal to royal tables even though louisiana we claim it we know that we uh we'd like to do the couchon de lait with the boucherie and uh and all that so legend tells us that the veterans of the napoleon's army brought the traditional preparation of the couchon de lait to louisiana in the early 1800s many of those soldiers settled down in a town in in a town in the Voyles parish named mansoor after the site of the last major campaign in egypt that they had since then, Mansour has been designated the Louisiana, by the Louisiana legislature as the L.A. Louisiana Capital Couchon de Lay. So we, Mansour has a festival every year, and um, and you can go there, and it's got a big old, they got hogs everywhere, and they do the big old Couchon de Lay. So today's boucheries and events like uh, Couchon de Lay Festival are no longer a practice of a necessity. Instead, they are a celebration of the culture, traditions, and of our ancestors who established these local communities and developed in southeast louisiana foodways we honor them today so that's going to bring a closing to our podcast today i'd like to uh, remind you that you can visit us at um www.redonionent.com you can um, also get us on facebook if you have any questions, like us on Facebook. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to message me. And uh, if you, uh, you got anything you want me to talk about on the podcast, I'll be, I would love to uh, get your questions. You can get me at Red Onion Entertainment. 
Also on Twitter, you can get me at, re at Red Onion, E N T T E R T 1. So I would like to thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. And if you have any uh, suggestions on what I should talk about uh, on the podcast, please feel free to uh, send them to me. Have a great day and a great week. Thank you. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.